everyone. It's like 30 degrees in Portland today, so I'm like turtleneck, beanie, wool socks on, freezing. Uh, please, please don't mind me. My name is CJ, welcome to my channel. I thought I would do a video in honor of nonfiction November. I think I would say I read a fair amount of nonfiction books. It's not my primary reading material, but uh, it's more than some people I know, so we'll go with that. I thought I could recommend three nonfiction books that I've read and I really enjoy, and then I wanna talk about Kiki is using a leaf blower and he just opened the door to the kitchen. Okay, the leaf blowing has stopped. Uh, anyway, I'm going to recommend three nonfiction books that I've already read and loved and I think you should read and three that are on my TBR that I haven't gotten around to yet. First up, this came out in 2020 called The Undocumented Americans. It's a collection of essays from a woman named Carla who is a Harvard grad, she's a DACA recipient, she is an undocumented woman living in the United States and is really embedded in the undocumented community because it is her community. It's like her friends and family are undocumented as well as herself, so she's really connected to a large portion of this population. She's also like a writer and a journalist and this essentially weaves together I think nine or 10 stories in different subsects of the undocumented community and the writing was really powerful and compelling. I think it's just like an excellent example of really accessible reporting mixed with kind of more personal narrative. So you really feel connected to the stories you're reading about. It's excellent, I loved it. I read this as part of a little book club with some of my friends and we all adored it. Highly, highly recommend. Next up is a book I've talked about before on my channel. It's called Draw Your Weapons by Sarah Santillis. She was actually my professor in college. She taught a class about art and ethics, I believe was the course. <laughs> I don't know, I graduated college like six years ago, okay? Leave me alone. This is also kind of creative nonfiction. It's a mix of memoir, journalistic reporting, interviews, as well as looking at critical text about image making. It's mostly about investigating images of violence, which we're all aware of. Like, for instance, the young girl running from the napalm bomb in Vietnam, you know, that iconic image. It takes instances like that that are just like circulated in the media cycle and people just consume without ever thinking, hey, I'm viewing a really violent image of a stranger I don't know who has no consent or right to say otherwise. So I think this is really important and it's changed the way I view media consumption, especially violent images of war and traumatized bodies and people forever. Um, definitely, definitely engaging, immersive and such a great read. I really recommend this. Very like Maggie Nelson vibes, Susan Sontag. Like if you like a feminist read, you'll like this. And lastly, I had a more fun example. I thought I would do So Sad Today by Melissa Broders, which is a collection of personal essays, which is nonfiction, you know? So if this is a subgenre of literature you haven't explored before, essay collections in particular, they don't always have to be heavy or intellectual or whatever. This is kind of the opposite of all of that. It's still really witty and irreverent and worth your time but it is funny like laugh out loud funny and really honest and gross and talks about sex and love and relationship boundaries in a way that i think is really unique to melissa broder highly recommend second part of this video three that i want to read that are on my tbr right first up we have shoot the damn dog a memoir of depression this was I saw this on Hannah's channel. She really enjoyed reading this and I think I will too. I got it from the library, which means I actually need to read it soon. I have depression. I'm pretty open about that on my channel and with people in my life. And I think this book ends with Sally Brampton committing suicide, which is really moving and honest. And I'm, 
I'm interested to see how how she does that how this comes together knowing that that's the end I'm looking forward to this Sounds good. Next up is Funny Weather, Art in an Emergency by Olivia Lang. I've read Crudo by Olivia Lang, which I liked, um, but I've heard her nonfiction work is even stronger, so I'm really excited to read this. It sounds so up my street. It's basically her examining in the age of Trump and Brexit all of the turbulent political weather, if you will, and how, and I think she's making a case that art is more important than ever, which sounds like kind of sentimental and fluffy like oh we our creativity will pull us through like I, I i agree with that and also strongly strongly critique that at the same time obviously i know she profiles and interviews georgia o'keefe hillary mantel ali smith and writes love letters to david bowie and wolfgang tillmans i love all of those artists and that sounds amazing i mean sub hillary mantel and ali smith but <laughs> Uh, it also says explores loneliness and technology, women and alcohol, sex and the body. Love it. Love it. What more can I want, really? Finally, a book that I really do want to read, but I haven't gotten around to it yet, is The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom. This is a memoir about Sarah's experience growing up in New Orleans and Louisiana in general and her family. So... I've heard the the writing and this is really impeccable and it's grounded in some strong female pillars that were a part of Sarah's life and it's a part of the country that I'm really interested in and has so much like lore and mystery around it so I think it'd be exciting to read it from a really personal perspective. That's it. That's my little six, six, you know, six little books um i think i think that's it i hope you uh liked it and uh what are you reading for nonfiction november are there any essay collections that i should be aware of that i don't know about let me know let a girl know okay i'll see you later